Hi everyone, on Crushing Doubt, I want to give everyone a chance to have a voice and for us all to hear the inspiring stories of recovery that people have experienced. In this interview, I have Karen joining me from Long Island. I met her through Crushing Doubt. It's one of the reasons I was excited to have her on. She saw the podcast and got something out of it. Let's hear her story now, the twists and turns it's taken, and how I fit into that picture, but more importantly, how she got better from all of the information she got all over the place. So thank you for joining us, Karen. Welcome to the show. I'm very interested to hear your story. Um, I met you through Crushing Doubt. Um, you're you're one of the first people I met through Crushing Doubt because it's a relatively new podcast. And you've reached out a couple of times to say that uh, my way of thinking uh, uh, has been a part of your healing process. And I'm not having you on here to talk me up. This is This is a podcast that is about the mind-body principles, how people can get better. And I, I just want to hear healing stories. I'm glad that I played a role and I want to hear how, but partly so that I can know what I'm doing that helps. So take us back and, and tell me tell me your story. Okay. Um, so the real first symptom when I was 17, I woke up with this searing pain in my left eye. Um, you know, this was the 1970s. Um, and I went to my mother and she gave me a Darvon, that was the pill of the day. And I remember sleeping in her king bed. And then I suffered with headaches all through my 20s, just living on furanols and medication. Um, and then when I was 30, I remember being in a restaurant and all of a sudden getting a searing pain in my back. And I then suffered for three years going to chiropractors and all of the doctors. Um, I had I had been in therapy. And in fact, I said to my therapist, I think all this um, rage that I have is lodged in my back. And two days later, I heard about Sarno. And it was, of course, to me. So when I went to him and told him my story, childhood trauma, which, you know, we could talk about at some point. Um, he right away in his way about him said, you are a classic TMS person. Um, it was of course to me, he did an examination, never did x-rays, um, but I just trusted it, went to his um, lectures and very soon thereafter my back aches just dissipated. However, um, I that still always had the headaches um, I was a little bit of a self-medicator with, you know, uh, Benadryl, whatever, to uh, numb the pain, a little bit of a drinker. Um, I had TMJ. I'd call Sarno. He would tell me, you know, whatever he'd say that would reassure me the pain would go away. Then so forth and so on, all these pains. And then he referred me to Dr. Arlene uh, Feinblatt, I think, mm -hmm. in New York. Yep. And I went to a group. And that was six weeks and whatever that pain was would go away and it would just pop up. And meanwhile, I was in therapy, had a lot of childhood trauma that I was dealing with, you know, not till I knew a lot of things in, in my 20s. And then when I was about 40 uh, ish, I had really bad allergies and uh, he referred me to Dr. Kirsten Fleekler in Manhattan. And I went to her for about 10 years and all the pains would come and go and I'd go to Sarno and, but I didn't piece it all together and why I consider myself a total success story. Now, last year at this time, I was really in a bad way with the headaches and they were happening every week. They would take me down for the day and I, I, list, I watched the movie, All the Rage. And I then heard of Nicole Sachs and I started listening to her podcast and all the pieces of the puzzle came into play. And I was just obsessed with Nicole, um, her podcast, rereading Sarno, uh, found Dan Buglia and then just recently found you. And I felt like there were things you all said and what I referenced earlier was that I always wondered why the pain would just pop up elsewhere if I believed in this. And you said something about 
being human and you even talked about your own twinges that you get i think and yep. i've listened to all your podcasts <laughs> and, um so i just feel like all these pieces of the puzzle now i'm able if i do get a headache my first thought is not freaking out anymore and that turning down the dial and i think you know i want to go on my trampoline or walk instead of being bedridden for the day and so i feel like you know i i have all the pieces of the puzzle the, uh, it's it's so great to hear your story on so many levels and part, what a, one thing that i wanted to share is that you've been suffering for a long time and I think for for the people who are watching this and listening to this, and it certainly was true for me, it sounds like it was true for you, to hear personal experiences that we can relate to is right. incredibly important. You read stories in Sarno about how people you know, got better in two weeks and then they never had pain again. Look, that can happen, but it's not the, it's not the norm, especially not for somebody who had childhood trauma and that's a different ball of wax and that's part of what you're right. referencing. Right. And so it's wonderful to hear that story, but also here's another part that I think is so important about what you said. You had an evolving healing process. It's something I can't stress enough that, you know, we're working with the mind we're working with and you've been through the experiences you've been through. We have to do what works for you. And a lot of times that's going to take different information. So let, let's jump back for a sec yeah. and let's talk about the different pieces of information you got that were the key pieces of information. First of all, how did you hear about Sarno? You said it was two days after so, you said yeah, that. Yeah, it was yeah. kind of like, I think the universe, there's no accident that I remember <laughs> so distinctly saying to my group therapy, you know, I think all this rage is in my, it, it's my, my pain in my back is all my rage. And it just yeah. popped in my head. Then my boss's father told me about Dr. Sorno. I remember the days distinctly. And he said, here's, he's an MD. He believes all back pain is repressed emotions. And it was of course to me. So again, mm -hmm. I had already been in therapy. I think I started when I was 24 with just a regular right. therapist. Yeah. And okay, so that, that set you on your way. And then you got to a place where you could get relief so then when you went to Arlene Feinblatt, what did you get out of that? Or was that just another time that it resolved the particular issue? It, it resolved. I remember, I don't know why, and I think I wrote this to you in a note. I was very intimidated by her and I wanted her approval so badly. And I didn't know how much I wanted her approval until recent weeks and what she might have represented. I think you just talked about her in one of your podcasts. Yeah, I, I mention her sometimes, yep. Right. So when she gave me the okay, I don't know what I was suffering at that time um, because the headaches never went away. They're almost like the last one. Sometimes I get worried I'm going to get something else. Um, but I don't remember what your question was. But, you know, I guess the group support, seeing other people suffered, that I wasn't yeah. the only one. And that, and that's part of what I wanted to, right? And, you know, because yeah. part of part of what I'm gathering is that you got certain things from certain people, certain experiences. Right. So then, then it sounded like you were kind of, uh, I don't know if you were on a plateau or you it was just ups and downs. And then you discovered all the rage. What did you get out of that? Oh, the, um, it brought back all the memories of Doctor Sarno and his. You know, I don't know that I'd use the word nurturing for him. But there was something about his no-nonsense, confident, gruff, uh, New York way that was nurturing. I mean, one particular time I remember I had just moved to Long Island. I lived in the city. I was newly living with my now husband. I was commuting. And I remember my toes were killing me and I couldn't walk. And all the podiatrists said, you have to have surgery right away. Um, you won't be able to walk in 10, 20 years. Well, this was now 20 years ago. I'm walking just fine. And I'll never forget where I was sitting when I called Sarno and he said, hogwash, put your heels back on. And my toe pain went away. <laughs> so, right. You, you know him, right? So it's so, 
And it, it was like, I didn't want to live where I had to constantly call him for each pain. I remember thinking if he dies, at least I have my TMS therapist um, who was there, but I wanted to be, help myself. Yeah. And I wasn't, yeah. I was to not everyone. You know, so, one of the uh, things, yeah. go ahead. Well, so I feel that I felt and now and with you and, you know, my posse of people I have, I am feel less alone. And to see that therapists also were patients of his. So they relate in a way that's different. Yep, absolutely. And, and it just it really speaks to the fact that we have to come at this from multiple angles. This is a lot of this is one of the things that people don't often recognize. Right. You have a, everybody's got a complex brain for you to really believe this at its fullest. You've got to come at it from all the different angles. And one of the things I talk about on, on the show is not just doubt, but also fear. And I, I'm up, I'm really appreciating what you're saying that you were thinking, well, if Sarno dies and he did pass away a number of years ago, yep. now I think three or four years ago, yes. uh, it was a sad day because he's such a hero of mine, but I can appreciate that feeling. I used to have this about my, my chiropractor who only got me to about halfway, but he was the one who told me about Sarno. So he, he gets yeah. huge credit. Um, I often felt that what happens if something happens to him? What, what, you know, to feel that your life is hanging by a thread and related to only one person is problematic. And it's one of the reasons I don't want me to be that person for anybody else. I want to be part of the solution. I don't want to be the whole solution because that leaves them in a bad place. That's part of how I came to the idea that feeling powerful yourself is a very important part of the process. Exactly. Well, I feel safer, which for me is a huge issue. I've always felt so unsafe and needed yeah. so much reassurance that it was exhausting. Um, and so now I have the tools with your, with all, you know, this, you guys weren't around in the nineties or oh. on the, right. And it was Sarno and my therapist. Right. And uh, this is another reason why I think it's so important. And what I'm working towards is changing the national dialogue on this. We need, uh, you know, and, and we need not just my voice. We need your voice. Right. We need all the, all the people who have suffered. And it does sound like part of what you got out of listening to me is that I do talk about me. Hopefully not in a way where I'm droning on about me all the time, but yeah. one, one, one of the ways that I talk about me, and I really think this is important, is people think that because I'm talking about getting rid of doubt, they think, oh, well, you must not have doubts. Actually, it's, it couldn't be further from the truth. To get rid of doubt, you got to recognize doubt. One of the reasons I discovered the power of doubt is I had so much of it. I was just awash in it. And it's one of the reasons I was stuck for so long. So now when I tell my story about the fact that I have symptoms, I have a TMS symptom of some kind every day. I've even had it during this interview. I had a little like stabbing pain right here. Who knows what that is? I mean, I, I think it relates to the fact that I put myself under a lot of pressure to have each and every communication be useful to people. And so I was even thinking about that as we were talking. It's like I've developed a second... TMS brain, you know, yes. and it's yes. always with me, <laughs> right. but I can and reduce right. my symptoms in seconds and that's right. good enough for me. Right. And that's what you, that was one of the clinchers when you talked about your own and that you get a ping. And like I said, I now it's like, okay, I don't have to freak if I have whatever the symptom is. That's right. For me, and, freaking, and, yeah. That will lead to more symptoms than anything. And it makes makes sense. I mean, when you've had decades of pain, it's hard to believe that just staying calm about it and knowing there's places to go and there's information, that's all I need. It, it's it's life-changing, and I'm so believe in this, and I'm grateful, and I'm grateful for the community and all of you, you know, the, the MDs and the therapists, you know, coming together, I just so grateful. Well, and and I'm appreciative of people like you who are willing to share their stories. Well, right. I, I wanted to ask one last question. Yeah. Um, 
Can you describe a little bit about where your symptoms are now? Is it more like what I talk about where you do have symptoms pretty daily, it spreads around, but you can kind of manage them better? Is that right? Yes. Is that right? Yeah. 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 It could be the toes when I'm going for a walk or, you know, the headaches. Uh, uh, they're always a pattern. I always wake up with them when I get them. Um, but I don't freak. I take an Excedrin and I don't beat myself up about that. Um, and I'm better in five minutes, 10 minutes, um, yep. s- you know, the sniffling, whatever it is. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't live in fear. It doesn't control me. Anymore. But I think about it a lot, the whole um, topic, more from fascination than fear. Yep, right. And what a, what a great way of saying it. Because when you're not afraid, you actually can be fascinated by it. You can't be fascinated by something you're terrified of. Right. And it's amazing at almost 59 that I've never felt better. I mean, my 40s, I had, I mean, doctor, I had a bad hip. Dr. Sarno said I didn't need a hip replacement. I went then went to the doctor that took over and said maybe I did. I had one. I'm great. I'm fine that I did. But the point is that I don't live in fear of it anymore. Like I said, it's more fascinating. Yeah. Well, this is wonderful having you on, Karen. I've appreciated you reaching out, letting me know that what I'm doing is helping. It's very encouraging. It helps me to keep keep going and doing it, though I won't stop anyway because it's my mission. But I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story. And let's keep in touch. You keep letting me know what you need from me. Keep writing those comments. They're very helpful. I will. And thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for this, really. Thank you both. All right. My pleasure. What a striking uh, story Karen has. One of the things that jumped out at me right away is, you know, you hear different stories. Sometimes people have a protracted uh, amount of time that they had a symptom and then they made it go away and that was magical and, and healing to them, of course. And then you hear stories like Karen's where she's had pain since she was 17 and all kinds of different pains and different parts of her journey that have gotten her better in different ways. And I thought that was an important story to share, uh, that kind of story. Um, it's more similar to mine, actually. When I look back in my childhood, I had a lot of symptoms. And I kind of knew that they were mind-body related, but I really didn't understand it until I cured my back pain uh, in discovering Sarno. And that was in my 30s. So, and even since then, and this was something that Karen and I connected on, I said, I have minor twinges of something every day. But like Karen, and I love that she said this, we can come to be curious about it. We can come to be interested or even fascinated in it once we're not afraid of it. You can't be fascinated in things you're afraid of or things that feel like they're ruining your life. So if you're not feeling fascinated by it yet, I don't blame you. But eventually, when you feel you can control it in the way that Karen now can and the way that I now can, It will be something that actually brings good things to your life. It gives me information. I also did want to say I I got a kick out of the fact that she discovered me, you know, through my podcast appearances and through this podcast. And there was something intriguing about bringing somebody on and hearing their story and how I might have fit in without having really talked to her before. She left a couple comments in some of the episodes uh, below the episodes And I just was, you know, fascinated to hear her story. So I'm so glad we had her on. I think these stories add so much to all of us, not just you, but me too. Every time we hear about a story about this this kind of change, we get inspired, we can believe it more, and we're hearing it directly from the people who who experienced it. So I appreciate her coming on. And any of you who have interest in coming on, please reach out to me. It's dan at crushingdoubt.org. Click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and put your comments below. The more I hear from you guys, the more I understand what you need, and I will keep working at it. We're going to change this national discussion, and thank you for watching.